channel Haley Marie Vintage. Today I have a very fun hot girl summer sewing project. That's a bit of a tongue twister, but I also, I don't know, have a hard time with words. But yes, I'm very excited. I don't make them that often on this channel, but I have used this pop. I think I've used both these patterns before on my channel actually, but I wanted to make a little like overall short romper thing. So I'm going to be using this New York pattern. I have used this in a previous video where I made the whole play suit set. So I will link that in the eye if you're curious about it. But I'm going to use these shorts again. These are my favorite shorts. I make them regularly. Like I make a few pairs of these for myself a year because I really, really like them and they work really, really well for me. And then I am also going to be using the bib of this jumper. So that is what I'm going to be using to make this little like overall romper thing that I'm very excited about. I have been picturing this in my head for a while and I have the perfect fabric. This fabric is actually from my friend Rose over on Rose Does. I will link her channel down below. It's this really cute denim that has this flower print on it that I just think is adorable and I think it's just going to make the perfect little summer overall set. The great thing too about the patterns I'm using is the overall bib will detach from the pair of shorts so it can just be the pair of shorts so I think this is going to work out perfectly it is a little bit stiff for these shorts so I'm not quite sure I think they'll be kind of poofier and I might end up needing to tailor them in a little bit to be a little bit less full but we'll get there when we get there um, but otherwise I think this will be a really straightforward and easy sewing project which is great I've been kind of in an easy sewing project mood so I'm actually pretty sure I can kick this out in a day we're gonna see how that works. I am going to still be cutting on a separate day. I'm still gonna cut my fabric today and then I'm gonna sew it tomorrow. Before we jump into the cutting, I do wanna mention if I have enough scraps left, I might also make a little skirt. We're gonna see. Then I could have like this really mix and match outfit that could be super fun, but there's no guarantee I'm gonna have enough for a skirt. So let's just go ahead and hop into the cutting and we'll see if I can eke out enough fabric for a skirt as well. So I have everything laid out and ready to cut. This was a pretty easy cutting job, except for the usual cat shenanigans. So what you'll see here is I did have room for a skirt, which was very exciting. On the skirt pieces, you can see I have folded them and I've taken, I believe, eight inches off the hem of the skirt by folding it like this was to fit it on the fabric piece that I had because if it was the full length of the pattern, it wouldn't have fit. And my goal was just to get a skirt. And I usually like my skirts to be knee length, but I think denim is just a really different medium so I felt like it could benefit from being a shorter skirt and otherwise yeah easy peasy I love cutting denim compared to all the fabrics I've been cutting lately this was a joy so the only other fabric I was cutting is I did cut a black cotton lining for the bib just because this denim is pretty thick and it didn't make sense to cut the lining out of denim as well because that would have made for a really unnecessarily thick piece so that was the only thing and then after I finished out cutting my pieces I notched and did the mark transferring. I did this all pretty straightforward with chalk. This was a mix of printed and unprinted patterns, so some were easier than others to mark. There were a lot of darts in this, so I needed to be make sure I was marking those. Good morning. We are next day. I have cut out my fabric. I forgot how nice it is to cut just like really stiff fabric and how much easier it is than cutting all the slippery fabrics I've been doing lately. So that was really nice. And I think this project's gonna go along pretty straightforward. I did have enough fabric to make the skirt. I think today my plan is first to attack all of the darts and all of the pieces and just get them over with because I don't enjoy doing darts. And then after I do all the darts, I will do them unit by unit. I think I'll start with the skirt and then do the pair of shorts and then do the bib. And then I will work on putting in all like the buttonholes and things like that. Even though it's 12.30, I still think I can knock this project out today, but we shall see. That could be uh, some false confidence. I got kind of slowed down this morning because I started binging old seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race. So um, I'm feeling inspired because there is sewing in the show, but I didn't get as much done. And then I found a glue spot in Spooky's fur because she is always into things she shouldn't be. And so then I had to cut that out of her fur. So it's been a journey this morning, but now we're ready to sew and I'm excited to get started. Just a reminder before we jump into the sewing that you can always buy me a coffee over on Ko-fi. I just mentioned it because I put a lot of time and effort into this channel. And so, 
if you feel like it I definitely always love getting a coffee it makes my day and now with that let's go ahead and jump into the sewing since I dislike doing darts I didn't want to do them three different times during this process so I decided to get them all out of the way at once and so first I am just pinning all of my dart markings together making sure everything is even and then after that I'm sewing the darts first doing the back stitch at the end of the dart and then at the very tip tying those off and then after I got all of those done I just needed to press them and then I was done with all of the darts for this project which was very exciting for me and now here I am pleating the skirt I don't know why but I get really anxious about pleating and don't feel like I'm capable of it and it was surprisingly easy on this one in this case I am marking the small dots and the large dots with different colored coated pins so that way I can flip it on the other side and not have to mark the front side of the fabric and then just matching those to each other this worked out perfectly which was exciting because pleats are just usually not my friend so I was really pleased when I got this done and ready and was able to press it and get it all ready to start sewing. And then from here, the skirt is very straightforward. I am just sewing down each of the side seams and leaving a nine inch opening for a zipper on the right side of the skirt. And the denim was so easy to work with. It made putting in the zipper a breeze. I was able to get the first one pinned and then sewed. And then it was easy for me to actually sew the other side, the placket part of the zipper without pins, which is always exciting. I did really like working with denim more than I expected. And then off camera, I went ahead and sewed on the waistband. And then here I am just pressing everything down to get it ready to hand stitch. I did save all of my hand stitching for the very end of every single piece, just so I could sit down and watch a show and get through all of it at once. And then I was trying to figure out my hemming strategy. I thought I was going to go around the bottom with some hem tape and then just fold it and press it. But the more I thought about it, the more I felt like that didn't really make sense for denim because hem tape is such a like delicate fabric or weave. And so because of that, I decided to use my machines like overlocking quote unquote stitch because I felt like this could then finish the edges and not allow them to fray and then I could just press them up once. Obviously, I didn't want to fold the denim twice because that would be quite bulky. So this method worked pretty well. However, when I did it again on these shorts, I actually did it before I sewed all of the short pieces together because it was much easier to do this on flat pieces as opposed to pieces that had already been assembled. After overlocking the shorts, they're pretty straightforward. Here I am pinning them down the middle or like the crotch and butt seams and sewing each of those together. And then I'm going ahead and pressing these seams. They are a bit tricky because they are so curved but it's really important to get a good press on these so they don't do weird things when you're done. I do kind of wish I had gone through and kind of like done a top stitch and stitched all these seams down. I guess it's not too late. I could still do that, but I'm not going to. And then after that, I am just pinning these shorts together on the sides, just like the skirt and getting ready to sew them. These again will have a nine inch zipper on the right side of the skirt that I will baste those stitches in instead of doing the full sew. And then the last step on these shorts before the waistband are to sew the middle of the legs together all in one stitch. This is typically how you construct shorts and pants. I always find it really interesting because it doesn't necessarily feel instinctual. However, it is just like the rules of this part of sewing. And here I have already put in the zipper. I didn't feel like showing that to you guys again since I already did basically the same thing before in this video. And then here I am showing you the pinning together of the waistband. This is really straightforward. I always overcut my waistbands for things so I can kind of make a decision as I go or if things end off a little off measure it doesn't matter so much and I do like my ends like I like to choose how much tab I have because sometimes I decide I want a button there sometimes I want a sturdier hook and sometimes I just want the traditional hook and eye and this gives me the freedom to do that because I haven't already cut the waistband to a set circumference and then here I am pressing the hem of the shorts to get it ready for hand sewing. I also did the waistband exactly the way I did the skirts. The shorts I ended up hemming about two and a half inches because that's what I feel like looks cute on me, but I did want to leave the option for if somebody else was to own these for them to lengthen them, so I left all that seam allowance. I also feel like with shorts, 
things kind of tend to flip up so you kind of want more wiggle room and seeing the wrong side of the fabric and then here we are on the last step which is the bib first i am taking the long things that are the straps and i am sewing those with their angles it took me a while to get the hang of exactly how i'm supposed to sew the points on this to have them turn out perfectly like even one of them's a little wonky but that's okay we don't do perfect sewing here so i just let it go and kept on going and then after that, I am sewing the bib and leaving a small space to be able to turn it out. I guess I should also know I left small spaces on the straps to also be able to turn those inside out, which you will see in just a moment. And then here I am turning that inside out. I did not leave enough space to pull the bib through, so I did end up kind of like ripping some of the fabric, but it's fine because this is part of the bib that won't be seen since it's along the bottom where the buttons will be. But yeah, definitely would recommend making sure you're leaving a big enough hole. I probably should have been able to fit like my hand through the hole. And yeah, this, this was a bit rough and it took a good amount of force and I heard things rip and I got scared, so. Um, you know, don't be like me, leave a bigger hole. Compared to that monstrosity, these were significantly easier. I am trimming down the seams so these don't get bulky. Usually when I make this pattern, I don't trim the seams as much, but since this is such a thick denim, I didn't want that additional seam allowance in there kind of like mucking things up. So I did cut these down and then I just used various tools to turn them inside out. And then I did the last of my machine stitching off camera. I did put in the buttonholes which is a very important step. I did these by machine and then after that I am just doing all of my hand sewing. So I'm sewing the openings from the bib and the straps and then everything else I'm mainly just doing the hem and the waistband and then sewing on the skirt hook on both the skirts and the shorts. I guess I shouldn't call them skirt hooks since they go on both but yeah I'm, I'm sewing those in here and then my very last step here is very exciting it is sewing on these very happy yellow buttons that I absolutely adore and I think really make the outfit and with that we're ready for the reveal and I can't wait to show you So yeah, that was the reveal. I hope you enjoyed it. Before I kind of talk about my final thoughts, I am going to do a new segment that I'm calling like, what did it cost? Oh, and Spooky wants to join it. So in this segment, I'm just gonna talk about what my materials cost, what my patterns cost, and kind of like what my hours of labor cost. So we are gonna hop over to, I guess, editing Haley, and we're gonna talk about how much this project cost. Spooky! All right, let's break down this sewing project. So my fabric was free because it was from Rose. Thank you again, I absolutely adore it. And I will have this as long as I fit into it. And then the patterns are actually a more complicated breakdown because both patterns were not under like $10. It's that because I have used each of these patterns, one I've used three times and one I've used four, I have divided that pattern by the number of times I've used it to kind of get the cost per use and therefore the cost of this project with this pattern. And then the supplies that I have listed here are things like the zippers. I did need two zippers, which I pulled from my stash, but I usually pay no more than $150 a zipper. So that is calculated in there as well as the thread and the buttons. The buttons were the most expensive supply here because they were, I believe, $13 for all of them, but they were absolutely worth it. I absolutely loved them. And then the labor here is important and I wanna keep hammering that in. In this case, it took me eight hours to complete everything. While I did get it all done in one day, I multiplied it by the rate of a job posting I found for a seamstress here in Seattle, which was $25 per hour. So I multiplied eight times 25 to get $200 in labor costs. But so overall, the supplies were only $36. However, if you calculate in my labor, you arrive at the total of $236 for the cost of this project. So just a reminder that labor is a lot of money and seamstresses should be paid fairer wages. 
And now let's jump into the rest of the wrap up. All right, now that we've talked about how much this project costs, yeah, this one wasn't very expensive, huh? Now we're gonna start to talk about the project itself. So I really love how this turned out. The shorts are beautiful. I love both the pieces with the bib and I'm also really happy I can take off the bib. I think this makes really versatile pieces and I am always a fan of versatility in a wardrobe. I also just like love this fabric. She's just gonna be here apparently. So I only have one arm. This is the skirt. The reason I feel a little bit more unsure of the skirt is I'm not sure about the pleating in the front and how much I like it. I just, I feel mixed, but that will be an easy thing to take out later. I do like the length of this skirt and how flared it is. Thank you, Spooky. So that part of it is definitely working for me. Um, I like how stiff this fabric is and so it really holds its form very well. I absolutely adore these yellow buttons with this fabric. They were the perfect match. And then let's talk about the shorts. I've used this pattern a ton. And one of the most interesting things actually about this pattern is the fact that these shorts always look horrible until you get to literally them being done. I try them on throughout and I don't like them the whole time. And then once everything is done and they're hemmed and the waistband's done, they're always so cute. And I just think that's really interesting because most other patterns, I feel like you can see things taking shape before you get there as opposed to these ones. Like I'm never sure about the shorts I'm making until they're done. I also do like wearing them plain, how they'll have like the little buttons on the back. I just think that's kind of a cute and fun detail. And then they do have the buttons in the front waistband as well, which I don't think will be uncomfortable because that is how the bib attaches and detaches. I just think for me, it is most important to get the most wear out of my clothes as possible. While I wanted something kind of overall -y, I wanted to make sure I could also have something not very overall -y. So that was the ultimate goal of this project and I have three pieces I will really love. So I'm super happy about this project and yeah, if I do anything, it'll just be kind of changing out the skirt with how the pleats are. So I'll think about that, but I'm gonna try wearing it a few times and see if in practice I actually don't mind it because sometimes when I'm doing like reveals or something like that, I'm getting like, I don't wanna say in my head, but I'm paying more attention to how the garment looks than if I'm say just wearing it to work. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, definitely leave me a comment and hit that like button to support my channel. It really helps me out. And then if you desire to help this channel out financially, I have my Ko-fi down below where you can go and give me a coffee or a tip. I would super appreciate it. And then if you aren't following this channel already, definitely hit that subscribe. I would love to have you stick around and I will see you next time. Bye.